Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. As always, we welcome good brother and fellow mensch, Eli Weber, Kabbalah Guru, joining us for a monthly update on both of our lives and where things stand at present. So we look forward to seeing what he's got to offer. As always, always a good time with him. Again, if you are new to the channel, please do like, subscribe, and share, and hit that customization button so you don't miss a minute of the updates. Brother Eli, how are you doing, my friend? We're doing great. We're up in, uh, we're up around 4,500 feet in Arizona, and we're just enjoying the time. It's, it's a, it's been a kind of a, an ongoing struggle of uh, survival with, we have to bring our own water in, but little by little things are uh, settling down. We're really enjoying the idea of developing this uh, kind of wild piece of property here. Mm. Is it, how's the, how's the weather over there? Is it still pretty warm? It's it's warm during the day. The sun is uh, relentlessly wonderful. I mean, it it powers our whole system. We have one solar panel on the RV, and it uh, it keeps us going. It's just an amazing system. We have some like leakage in the water system. We're, we're we're still bringing up our own water, but we're hoping to drill a well soon, so that should uh, change things. But yeah, it's it's been uh, it's an ongoing adventure, and we're enjoying it. It's a process, as they say, right? So. everything is a process i mean that that's that's what this whole i mean that's really the bottom line to everything you have to i think in in terms of analyzing the situation you have to look at the the beginning middle and end you have to look at the whole process like you said the flow of events the flow of movement the flow of direction because i think personally it's it's a big mistake to think that Okay, on this date, the EBS is coming and Trump's going to do this. Right. Those kinds of things are, I do not, there's no, other than 9 11, there's nothing, and that was done by the bad guys. There's nothing in the white hat movement to indicate that they're going to just all of a sudden say, okay, you know, it's over. Let's, let's all, it has to play out in reality, in real time. And people have to, it has to be believable to 99% of the population who have no idea what's going on mm -hmm. to just throw cold, ice cold water on them and say, wake up now. It's, I don't see that happening. No, I mean, I agree. And you're spoken like a true Torah, a true teacher in your former days about uh, using wisdom and discernment. And, you know, that's the same thing as, you know, we tell our audiences, forget about dates and rates, just look at events, puzzle pieces, don't overanalyze the decoding so much if you can help it, but but just try to use discernmental wisdom, you know, checks in your spirit. I'm, I'm big on instincts. I know you are likewise. And using that as a barometer to help you kind of, you know, decode. I mean, we all know we're at the end. We, this is, we're in the birthing pains. We know this is a protracted cycle, but if we made it this far by God's grace, I know he'll take us to the end stage. And, and again, the goal as always is to lock arms and cross the finish line together. So um, I've been loosely following your channel a little bit on Rumble, but for those who are not familiar, can you just kind of appraise people what you guys have been discussing on your channel to this point? Well, yeah, just the, the flow of events. I, I'm I'm live. I'm live broadcasting now on YouTube again, which I'm very I'm delighted about because uh, they, they took I had some strikes against me, but they nullified one of the strikes. I, I outlived the strike, which is has not happened in the previous 10 channels that they eliminated. So I'm st I'm back on YouTube and I'm hoping to get monetized. That would make a big difference. But we're basically we're basically feeling as as a community. It seems to me that we're just holding tight. We're not, it, it, I think it's very important to understand that everything moving forward is an inside job. And we've been conditioned as a species to think by the bad guys, to think that somebody else is controlling the world. And a series of events is, is what's, what, what leads the world whereas it seems to me pretty clear and it seems in my community and i'm sure in your community we're finding out that it's all an inside job and as long as we are you know at peace with ourselves and even when we're not at peace to recognize okay i'm out of sorts let's see what it takes to get back to into the groove with the creator 
And so I think that's that's kind of where we're holding. I mean, I had I had, we we have been really in literally in in survival mode. We're we're living in you know we're living in a very wild place. It's a very extreme place. That's why I got such a good deal on the acreage. I got a very nice deal because nobody else wants to live here. It's tough to live here. There are rattlesnakes. There's all kinds of stuff. But the, at the end of the day, I realized I cannot continue to live in panic mode. And I think this is a message that everybody has to understand. If you're in panic mode, it's not because reality is telling you. It's not because reality is scaring the heck out of you. It's because you are allowing reality to scare you instead of taking a deep breath. And, and I'm not saying that I'm so composed and I'm so together and like I can always do this. But I realize at some point we've been we've been up here on this on my property for about a month. And I realized at one point, you know what? I'm just scared. Every day I'm waking up scared. Something's going to happen. We're not going to have enough food. The truck's going to break down. This, you know, and I'm just living in fear mode. So I basically channeled. I said, you know what? I'm, I, uh, I, I have to, I have to do this a different way. I have to take a deep breath. I have to pray to God. I just, you know, it was, it's that simple. I said, God, I'm living in panic mode, man. You know, I'm not in my I'm not in my community. I'm not with my 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 people that pray every day and all that. I'm out of my comfort zone, but I'm uncomfortable and I need help. I need I need to feel composed. I need to be able to handle the, the problems as they come in and not feel like if I don't do the right thing, we're we're going to be, you know, falling off the mountainside. So. I reached that conclusion. I prayed to God. I said, man, just help me out. I don't know. You know, I'm really scared. I just need help. And since then, it was maybe like a week ago. Everything has been good. My my YouTube channel is doing better. You know, it looks like I might get monetized again. Uh, things are things are moving. I'm feeling more positive. I'm feeling positive about my financial situation, which is, you know, I, I have to both operate beyond the matrix in in the real world here where you're dealing with you know do we have enough water to get through the next two days you know the, and at the same time realize that i i still need to pay the you know the certain bills i need to be able to you know afford certainly afford the the food bill which is uh astronomical now given the inflation you you can't you can't go out of the grocery store you know we can't get our supplies without spending a hundred two hundred dollars and we need supplies that will last us for at least a couple of days. But I think the bottom line is that no matter what you think is really going on, everything is an inside job. And this goes for me too. And it, you know, even though the world might be panicking, the world might be, you know, it, we're in the end stages of the movie. And yes, I think we're coming into, a, and I think the feds, insisted the fed's idea the fed bringing down the interest rates is a clear indication to me that everything is following the movie but it, it if you're looking if you're obsessing about you know nasara jasara when is it going to happen when is the announcement going to come when is the ebs coming you're missing the boat because this is a time of tremendous opportunity the the everything is about to change and if you can stay calm and position yourself and just make calm decisions i mean i'm if for me i i made the decision to invest in land i mean my i don't have any really significant investments other than this piece of property so my life is invested in this and you know i by the way i i, I know other i have a guy the guy who sold me this land is always coming up with really good land deals. So if you want to reach out, if somebody wants to buy land for less and and do what I'm doing, you know, you could reach out to me. I'll, I'll give you my friend's uh, contact information. But I think this is a time to really realize that we've been led through many generations to believe that the newscasters are going to tell you what's going on. And now we are finding out that, no, they were not telling us what's going on. They were creating a bias. They were creating a scenario that was not good for us. So it's very important that we stay connected to our spiritual sources and 
is try to muster whatever calm we can. Just take a deep breath and go with your own flow and follow your own sense of what's really important to you. Not what's going to make you money, not what's the smartest investment, but what am I really about? For me, you know, I, we just finished our breakfast. St cooking my breakfast on a campfire is what I'm really about. I mean, mm -hmm. this, this is who I am. This, I mean, I, I'm so happy. I'm so happy to go out, you know, I have my little fireplace. I, you know, it's just, this is the way I like to live, but I encourage everyone to step outside of what you think is normal, what you think is required, what you think is going to be good because somebody else tells you it's good and forget about it and just really take a good hard look. And this goes for educational community as well. This goes for educating kids. If you were, if you are blessed with the, the, uh, ability the if you have the you know if if you are in custody of a child okay if you are if you are helping with the child's education encourage them to do what they are most interested in forget about what needs to be done forget about they need a certain amount of math and english and this goes down the line for every human being on the planet feel what you really want to do because in kabbalah in Orthodox, you know, in Judaism, mystic Judaism, your sense of desire is is beyond your intellect. What you want, you don't think about, well, what do I really want? Is this make sense? You just want it. It's above intellect. If you can go into really your godly desires, I mean, yes, there are perverted things you could want, and and those things have to be explored. And in my opinion, they're they're best not just ignore it. You're, you're best to explore that, say, why am I so obsessed with this? Is this really good for me? But at the end of the day, keep realigning yourself with your godly sense of purpose. What am I really about? What have, what has always brought me the most greatest sense of enjoyment? And for kids too, what, you know, forget about what they should be learning. What do they want to learn about? And just let them follow their own will, their own desire. And they will, my son did that. My son, my son never learned math, never learned English. And now he now he's in college learning math and English. He he taught it to himself. If so everything right now is really about realigning our overall sense of of being and and stop relying on outside sources outside news outside decodes outside ideas and align yourself with your godly purpose mm -hmm. align your children with their godly purpose and if everyone does that and certainly the people on this channel who are highly spiritual it's probably star seeds you need to show the rest of the planet that no we are not victims we do not have to live in a victim mentality all you have to do is take a deep breath, close your eyes, align with the creator and say, hey, man, what am I really about? What do I really want to do? Not what should I do? Mm -hmm. Not what people, other people tell me I must do. But what do I really want to do? And then just do it. I think it's I. so that that's what I, I, I know. That's a long explanation, but that's kind of what I'm holding right now. And I, I think in terms of the economy, I'm, I'm very interested in finding out what, what you're seeing, because I know there's a lot a lot of things, but it seems to me like the changes will happen in a very natural, it, it's not going to be, you know, all of a sudden, you know, gold is going to go to 10,000 or 100,000. Or, I mean, it is gently going up. Every day, gold goes up a little more. Uh, silver goes up a little bit. And the, these, pa the, these trajectories will continue, in my opinion. And the, the fact that the Fed, the so-called Fed, the Fed is, is you know, the Fed is out of business. The Fed is not in calling the shots. But whoever is calling the shots is saying, OK, man, you guys have had enough misery. I see gas prices are coming down now. I think we are at the turning point of this whole economy. And people, you know, the people who, who are somewhat in charge, I think the White Hat military are are have brought us to a point of understanding and i think now it's just like it's going to be a gentle ride back into a, a new world where where 
your sense of purpose and your connection to your joy and you know the, the the highest level of the soul by the way is is joy so right under joy is will what you want to do but when you are connected to your intellect and you are thinking thoughts that are connected to your purpose and to bringing you you know more into alignment with your godly soul you're going to experience joy like you like no earthly pleasure could ever bring yeah. Yeah. Lots to unpack there, uh, Eli, and what you said. First of all, very, for the most part, very cogent, shrewd advice and, and a lot of wisdom infused in your words. I would say that one of the things I've always liked about you as my friend and brother in, in, in our time together over the years, and I'm sure your audience to a larger degree as well, is that whether you, nobody ever agrees with anybody 100%. And I'll, that shouldn't be the goal. The, the, the idea here should be to our podcasts are to encourage one another, love one another, and extrapolate knowledge and share that factual wisdom for the purposes of discernmental ability for people's individual lives, because everybody's not in the same place, as you said. My point is that whether somebody agrees with you or not fully, one of the things I think we can take away from your sharing and articulation is a sense of calm, a sense of level-headedness, balance, in other words, one of my favorite adjectives. And so I've always appreciated that about you, the aspect that you bring a sense of, of calm levelness to the situation when things have been chaotic up and down, not to say because you're human and we're going to have human, that's the flesh that God put us in. But again, at the end of the day, your point that we can rely on the Lord to balance it, because I know I've been going through things that one of the things I've always said is, is an axiom for me, I don't know if you can relate, but it's kind of my take on what you said is that figuring out where I end and where God begins, meaning where's the demarcation line that I turn it over to him and say, God, I can't, it's too much for me. I can't handle this. I'm, it's too many bags on my back. I'm overwhelmed. Take it. And, and we serve such a loving God that wants to take our burdens. We, we're sitting, we're so, the world has lied to us and conditioned us that we can do it all on our strength and it's all on us. It's a complete lie from Satan. The reality is, you know, and your wisdom is that God wants our filth. He wants our imperfections. He wants the things we spend so much time trying to cover up from church, from everyday society, because we're always trying to look like we have it all together. And what's wrong with breaking down? What's wrong with being human? We're, we're going to need each other at, at all times, especially with where we're headed. So it feels a little, um, I don't want to say inappropriate. It feels a little odd for me to go into the economy when you just made this very nice thesis about not worrying about the money. But at the same time, I don't want to rob you of the information either or your audience. You know, and I totally agree with you. When I get to a point of having my own guardian slash children, as the world would say, one of the things I've always wanted to tell them is, do what you love and the passion will follow. We're going into a new world whereby we don't have to do what we thought we had to do just to put food on the table and pay the bills, but we can actually monetize our talents the way that God always designed us to do. We were not all meant to be in an office crammed in like roaches doing menial, pointless, soul-sucking tasks when our real talents are to, to teach, to preach, to write, to play, to teach people how to take better care of their bodies to, you know, whatever it is that your gifts are, use that, you know, again, I know you don't subscribe to it, but you're always open to it is the biblical context of Matthew 25 in the new Testament, where it talks about the men with three talents. And the short story is one man had 10 talents. He used them. God said, great. I'm going to multiply them and give you more. Second guy, same thing. I think it was five or 10 multiplied it. The third guy buried, not, not, not ironically, on the desert where you are, he buried his treasure. God gave him some money, buried his treasure in the ground. And God said, I'll come back sometime later. He came back sometime later. And God said, what'd you do? He said, well, I kept it in the ground. He goes, you fool. I could have put that in the, uh, I'm kidding here, the Yeshua Savings and Interest Bank and made some money on that. You know, And he not only took that talent away from the guy, but he cast him into the pit because it was disobedience. And so I don't want to be that person that, doesn't use every single talent God has given me and you and everybody watching for his betterment and for the betterment of his people, right? You know, his first commandments, love him, love one another. If we can get those two right, kind of think everything else will follow suit. So I hope that made some sense to you. 
Oh yeah, and and I just want to I just want to like say I, I I'm kind of expounding on my sort of the general principles, but I'm I'm fascinated by the economy, and I you know I I also there's a part of me that they can't wait for the dinars to go. Uh, you know I mean I I have things that I that I need on the land here. Uh, you know the well I I don't really have enough money to dig the well, but I I have some of it, and you know all, all these things could tra translate to me for me directly into into this piece of property. So I, I have great plans for this property. So I'm very excited about the economy and I'm very excited about the fact that I feel in the future, we will be more in control and we will have more uh, natural, we will connect with the natural abundance once we remove these Satanists, these parasites who have been sucking us dry for, you know, for eons. And we, yeah. we can, you know, there's a natural abundance. I mean, there's, you know, I'm looking at endless land. I'm, I'm, I border like what you're looking at is state land. It, 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 you know, it, it's a checkerboard, but it, it's, it's not limited. But yeah, I'm I'm very interested in, in your take on things. I, I don't mean to belittle it at all because I am also fascinated by you know the 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 reevaluation. I'm finding personally, I mean, I'm more doing economics by like personal valuation, but I'm finding gold is amazing. And gold has gotten me here. And I've had to sell most of my gold, but it's becoming more to in from my experience more like it's very common now in, in where i am living now to go into a pawn shop and get spot for your for your metals and that that's just a that's a new valuation that people are really valuing gold and silver and this is you know in a practical way it is replacing the old banking system i don't i don't need to really have much to do with the bank other than with the mortgage on this piece on this piece of land mm -hmm. but i can i'm i'm much more involved on a personal level with with the pawn the pawn shop and i'm i'm hoping to make like make them like a part of my bank is like okay you know if if I come into let's say I I went I have a bunch of money the first thing I'm going to do is go to the pawn shop and say hey man give me a roll of uh, of gold eagles you know I I you know I I'm, I got, I got some money I don't want it to sit as cash and everything for me is already you know valued in in the metals even though I'm I really don't have much left but. It, it, it you know for me i see gold going up and up and you know the, i'm but I, I i don't i don't i'm taking too much time i'm really interested i'm very interested in because you guys have a great team and i love what you know and i i i haven't had the time to really focus on what's going on but i really i'm very excited about contact you know connecting with you and and hearing what you guys are, are saying about the economy so i you know I, i'm talking these platitudes but in, in actuality i'm i i watch very very closely what happens in the crypto market, what happens in the gold and silver market and mm -hmm. um, BRICS, the BRICS nations and all this stuff. So, and I, you know, I'm, I'm feeling like, you know, we're going to see more of Judy Shelton. I feel like we're going to see more of uh, the people behind XRP and XLM. And I, I, I think, I think that uh, when, when Trump is coming out with some kind of crypto thing today, or his son mm -hmm. is that it's just, it, it's kind of like, it, it's kind of like um like djt like which i invested i'm i'm a very big investor in djt when it goes down i you know when it's below 20 dollars man i i don't have a lot of money but if i have a hundred dollars i will buy five shares of djt because what djt represents to me is the future of broadcasting and so when when uh when trump's son is talking about crypto he's he's showing us he's not saying okay you know this 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 specifically but i think he's he's kind of like leading us in a kind of gentle way within the bounds of nature to appreciate things that will only increase in value in my opinion but i'm <laughs> I'm very. I'm sorry. I'm talking too much. I really want to know, and I, I haven't even had that much coffee. But I'm. I, I really <laughs> know, uh, I want really want to know what you think. Sure. Well, you weren't belittling me at all. I didn't take it. I just. I didn't want to like. You had this beautiful philosophical view that you gave, and I didn't want to like go. Yeah, but the finances. I, I didn't want to taint the purity of that message. Was what I was trying to say. But uh, I'm trying to walk a line here. But no, bartering is what you're talking about, and and it's good to buy it in cash, Eli. 
the the with your cash to gold and silver because then there's no traceable way on it. it'll protect you so we're having, we're having an um so we had some technical issues there eli i know you were dealing because you're out in a very remote area as per example but uh what we were talking about i was going to thank you for your segue i was going to very briefly kind of touch on some financial things my audience and i think your audience to a large degree knows the genesis of this so we don't need to go back into 101 i'm just going to pick up with you where we are at present rate and we'll talk about bricks towards the end okay so i'm going to share my screen with you so just bear with me a second now this let me know when you can see this i got it I okay it. this is this is something that came out regarding zimbabwe very cool stuff so i'm going to show you in a minute just bear with me folks i go through one slide at a time this came out last week uh, this is 20 promises that Nelson Chamisa, the incoming president, we expect for Zimbabwe, we've talked about as a Christian, uh, things that he's promised. Where does that sound familiar? President Trump, 20 promises. These are his first 100 uh, days in office, his promises. Release all pro political prisoners, restore the rights, restore sanity. To what we were talking about Eli, the education system, remove the corruption within the curriculum. The number three we highlighted, remove bond notes. That doesn't mean, folks, that he's not going to validate the bond notes. He's removing it out of the old system and tucking it into the new, the new Zig notes, the Zig dollars backed by gold. So it'll be one form of currency, basically, with Zimbabwe. It'll be united, right? Uh, free universal education, healthcare, helping with shareholder fairness, less manipulation, the stock market there. They announced, if you noticed, Eli. Uh, Elon Musk announced that Starlink is available in September. You may recall that we showed you in July that they were planning per Jasara News updates that they put Starlink satellites obsequiously in the background in July, but it was it, it was publicly acknowledged by Elon Musk this month. Well, who is Elon Musk tied to? President Trump. Putting the pieces together, that means they're in cahoots working with Nelson Chamisa. See what I mean? It all connects. In the rest of it, you can you can read at a later date, and you could folks can watch this as much as you want. But for the issue of time, I think those are the the key ones that we're looking for, right? So then I'm going to see if I can do this. Can you see this other one here with the billboard? Can you see that, Eli? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you should see a billboard on like a sign in a field. I'm I'm still seeing the last slide. Huh. All right. Let me see if I can uh, share the screen with you. Um, let's try this. Let's see if that, okay. There, I got it now. Sorry, folks. It's not a perfect, perfect setup. This is a this is a billboard that Nelson Chamisa sponsored. Now it's from May of this year, in full disclosure. But future proves past. So he's telling you one bond note, one to one against the USD. People want to argue inevitably about, oh, it couldn't happen. Da, da, da. That's because their mindset is conditioned to not believing they could actually get this wealth. That goes back to what we talked about, Eli, a lot of times, changing your mindset, taking action, and sowing where you prosper. But they absolutely can do this. They have the goal to do it. Um, you know, Whether you like them or not, Ariel and X has talked many, many times about the validity for those who bother to research, that they have the goal to substantiate doing this. Okay. This plays perfectly into the first um, 20 promises within the first 100 days was my point. Now, let's see if I can, I may have to stop and start again. So you have to forgive me here, Eli, but uh, just bear with me. So now you should see this coming up here. This is as of this morning on X, uh, Crime Watch for Zimbabwe just in. This came out actually yesterday. I got this and we put it on our Telegram. So I encourage you, Eli, to share our telegram with some of your viewers so that they can stay appraised of all these updates that come in at a frequent rate. But there was a helicopter crash yesterday. It's widely believed that the current president, Edwin or Emerson Mangawa, was on there with the vice president. It hasn't been confirmed yet, I will tell you, but we're waiting for that. If that is the case, that may be the narrative that the White Hats, as you say, are using to usher in Nelson Chamisa. So we're showing you the puzzle pieces and how we think they might be congruent and come together. Does it make sense? Amazing. Okay, so now let me stop the share. And then again, I apologize, folks. I had the only way to have to do this with expediency. Now we turn our attention to Iraq. 
Now, they've done some amazing things this weekend, Eli. They are being pushed. I'm going to tie things in together for the interest of time because you already know this. Your audience already knows this. And ours likewise because we talk about it in nauseam. So this is the Central Bank of Iraq's building. If you can see it here, it will be officially the tallest building in the Middle East. Iraq is set up to be the new Dubai. Guess when they're set to have this building ready to be completed? 2024, this year, which means they've already done it. Over the weekend, they have been working feverishly to appoint a new speaker to get rid of the corrupt Iranian proxy, um, Ali Alak is his name. And they're gonna be replacing him with a gentleman, I name escapes me, it's on our telegram, uh, begins, with an, begins with an S. And he um, he is a non he's an he's an Iraqi he's a non corrupt non Iranian proxy outside of Maliki's um, war chest for lack of a better term. So they're doing that they're digitizing their system. Why are they doing that? Because BRICS is coming up October twenty second to twenty fourth. We've talked to many subject matter experts: Greg Manorino, Bill Holter, S.G. Anon, uh, Andy Sheckman, and Miles Franklin. And they've all been in agreement with us that ostensibly those 160 nations and Putin has just announced last week that 34 more nations are set to come in. So we don't know what the final number will be. Could be somewhere between 160 and 180 nations. The point is you have well over 80% of the world's population clearly proving they don't need the US anymore. And they really never did. It just especially now more than ever that the dollar stranglehold, which I have made the argument, Eli, that the world's most potent lethal drug isn't PCP, isn't crystal meth, isn't heroin or cocaine, it's the US dollar, because it's strangulated to your point, the entirety of the world. So this building coming out is massive. It's, trust me, they're not putting this out with a corrupt um, US dollar denomination. They have to come out with their own currency to do it. So I'm just showing you a couple of screenshots as you can see right here, for the sake of time, that's a big, big deal. So everything you can see over the next five weeks is coming together. And they can do that because they've already done it. How can Nelson Shemisa make those 20 promises? Same way that President Trump is making it, because he's already done it. I've shown you evidence of getting out of the IRS last time we talked, get baked into the Treasury. As you said, Fed is pretty much done and kaput. So Iraq is moving quickly because the US dollar value is going to drop precipitously. It's already dropping on the index. On Wednesday, President Trump has a rally in Long Island, not too far from your old stomping ground. Um, and when, when, when they do that, that's the same day as the rate cut. It's going to be a half a basis point. Why? Because the numbers with the economy, unemployment are fudged. They're completely fake, phony, and false. So they're going to have to drop that rate a half a basis point. We should see by the end of this year, at least one and a half to potentially two basis points. It's going to rock the dollar. Money's going to move into gold and silver, as you said, and cryptos like XRP, XLM, Shiba Inu, and many others, right? And you're going to have this nice little setup happening. You can see how beautiful the illustrations of this building are. So they're, they're definitely moving into the 21st century. They're being forced to do this by Trump in the, in the, BRICS, situ, sist, the BRICS nations because they can't, they can't stay on their old system. There's, there's, we're past the point of no return. So that's kind of you know, where we are with that. Let me stop the share and I will show you one other quick thing uh, for posterity's sake, if I can find it here. Let me see if I can do this. Um, I don't know if you can see that or not. Probably not. Let me, uh, I'm sorry, folks, just bear with me a second. Technology is not always so friendly, but I mean, I think that's for the sake of time, I think that's pretty much the quick sort of five minute summation of where we are. But Iraq's moving forward. You can see what Zimbabwe is doing. Putin's getting ready, ready to annihilate optically the rest of Ukraine, which he's been already doing with the Azov Nazi battalion that's been enslaving the Ukrainians for a long time. We talked about that, which means he's going to run in with Chi on the Republic side. It's going to be a short Taiwan invasion. That's good for Vietnam just tied to silver, which is tied to Litecoin, hint for cryptos. We talked about that, I'm gonna reprise it. And you're gonna see all these things have a cacophony of an overspill on top of each other, like a lasagna a layering effect. What's, what's the odds that next month Trump comes in and says, he, he said, I'm gonna have a peace deal in 24 hours because he's already done it, right? So he's, he's just prepping the narrative for the normies. It's not for us, we already know this. But to give your audience encouragement, 
over the next three to five weeks, you're going to see massive amounts of these things coming to a head because they have to happen before, before he comes in optically, because you're still going to see the proverbial crap hit the fan in November, December, even after he's been elected. Because when did we see that, Eli? 2008, right? After Barry Sortero was forced in, we saw, uh, you know, October, November, December, it got really bad. And then it really hit its apex in January. And that's why Trump says, I'll have it back within the first six months by labor, excuse me, Memorial Day of next year, running concurrently into the 4th of July of 2026, we're going to have a jubilee. That doesn't mean we're waiting for Nassara then. That's just when the lion's share of people are going to see taxes removed, money's put in their accounts, central banks taken out, uh, the illegal deportation of illegals going out. All these things are going to be happening at a, at, a, at, a, at a very optically fast pace. But for us who have invested in this, we're going to see it this year rolling into next year. And I'll give you another hint for your audience. Watch for the crypto markets, the Super Bowl cycle to start this October running into April. Hmm. Let's put that together. Isn't that around the time that the election happens and that we have this six month dark period while he turns it around for the public? A Super Bowl cycle is happening simultaneously. The world's got no idea that this is happening with Iraq. They think it's a war-torn, uh, deep state, bad guy country, and it's uh, never going to happen, and they're never going to recover. Foolish thinking, because they believe the mainstream lies, as you said earlier. But under the cloak and dagger of this, you can see they're already well positioned. We think what's happened is they've probably already reinstated in country, but now it's going to roll out to the public because the dinar doesn't mean as much to them inside Iraq. It means more to us because we can trade through the dollar instrument because we created it as a country, right? But what matters to them is stability with their currency and oil revenue credits because they have so much oil in their country. Unknown caller. Second large oil producer in the Middle East. And I don't know what they are in the world. They got to be in the top five somewhere. So the oil revenues credits, those citizens can live off those oil revenue credits every month as like a stipend or an annuity. And then whatever their currency brings is stability is better than what they were dealing with with the dollar having to trade in this corrupt system. So in essence, that's kind of our update. Yeah, it, it seems to me like Nasara and Jasara is being rolled out, but it's not being rolled out as Nasara Jasara. It's like the 20 points Trump had his 20 points, and a lot of them were very closely aligned with the th kind of thinking from Nassar Jassar. It looks like the, the guy from Zimbabwe as well. Mm -hmm. So I think everything is happening, but it's just not happening with the with the trumpets and the uh, the fanfare that we expected. And uh, it's just kind of rolling out w within the, the bonds, the, the bonds of nature, it seems like to me. Well, yeah, because you said earlier in this broadcast, you said it's, it's not always going to happen the way we I mean, how often in life, Eli, does we make our <laughs> The Bible says we make our plans, but God laughs while he redirects our steps. I think that's in Proverbs. So it's like, how many times in life have we said, well, I want this to happen and this should happen, but it, it rarely does it ever go that way, but it always works itself out. And I think this is much the same thing. I'm still getting comments on our channels. Somebody said, um, I think on one of my shows with SG, if I remember correctly, um, you know, I just had $10,000 of medical bills wiped out and 40,000 of student loans. So if that's Nassar, I'll take it. It's going to show up in sort of weird, odd ways. That's just the nature of it. But everybody will get it. They just need to stop trying to compete with everybody and go, well, how come he has it and I don't have it? That's, that's the mindset we have to depart from. And once we're happy for other people, it allows God to bless us more freely. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I'm, I, I've also seen a lot of miracles in my own personal bank accounting. Uh, so it's, you know, you just have to have faith and uh, believe it. And it seems to take care of itself. Things are amazing. But I think it's all, it's all, you know, it's just not openly, people are not ready to hear, you know, Nassara, Nassara, Chisara, that, that, you know, U, UBS, the uh, EBS, that, that's not the way, in my opinion, that it's going to go down. It just has to happen in a gentle way so people aren't completely freaked out of their gourds. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, the, the White Hats, the military, Trump, the whatever, however you want to, you know, characterize it, those folks are not unsympathetic to our plight. And they are trying desperately, I believe, to wake up as many people as possible, as gently as possible, uh, right to the end, because it's not their 
God says it's not my desire that anyone should perish. Well, conversely, it's not their desire that they should have the least amount of collateral damage as possible, right? And, and unfortunately, there's, it's unavoidable. There's going to be some people who just, it's free will, that choose to never believe, that choose to, you know, think oh, fatalistic, even when they get a chance to get into a med bed, they're saying, I don't want that. I want, give me the drugs. And, and that's their free will to do that, unfortunately. And so we're, it, you know, people get to choose how they react to things and how much they let into their life. I, I've said this to you before. I think there's a lot to be said for, for me spending time with Yeshua or the Lord in the field every day, as we've talked about, and just practicing simple things like acknowledgement and gratitude. You know, the roof over your head, food on your table, clothes on your back, this platform, the people that, that you know, trust and believe in what we're doing and support us in many different ways. And, um, you know, that, that God is in control and that no matter how bad things look, you know, as those attacks subside, there is a, there is a silver lining behind the whole thing. And I just find that when I'm more grateful, it, it gives God the ability and well, the ability, but the permission and he sees that my heart is right. He's like, okay, my son's ready to move forward. I can now bless him with the next thing, whatever that is. Right. And again, you know, you and I as brothers are helping our respective audiences to cross the finish line together, locking arms. And that's the most important thing is we can just, all we can do is our part and God has to do the rest. It's as simple as that. It's beautiful. I, lo I love it, John. It's, it's great. I, it, it's very exciting. I, I think that, you know, we just have to just stay, just stay calm as to the best of our ability. And it's, it's not an easy thing, but no. if you stay calm and know that everything's going to work out. All right. Cause it always does. Um, it will. It always does. And I'll, I'll leave you with this. I have a friend Garrett that always watches our podcast faithfully. And he said like six years ago, he said, John, if you have a pulse, you have a purpose. And I've always, <laughs> I've loved that because it's so true. Right. Well, when he was facing some really serious health challenges and God pulled him back, you know, from the dead, um, you know, Greg Manorino, God bless him. His sister had stage four metastatic, I think it was brain cancer, if I'm not mistaken. You know, in the old world, you don't typically come back from that. And the med beds haven't come out yet. Yes, they will, folks. They're coming out. I don't know when. I'm, I don't have a seat at the table. I just, you know, I see progress. So, you know, people at Walter Reed. The point is, is without that med bed, he needed a miracle. Well, he got one. His sister fully recovered doctors once again have no explanation because they're not in control and i said that was an opportunity for you greg to give your life to the lord and your sister conversely he he did you a solid he showed you he showed up as a miracle so give him the glory the gratitude for that and watch what else he will do and so it's it's beautiful to see eli in this turning point in this we're, we're sort of at a crossroads, right? Wouldn't you say we're kind of at a, the end line of the old world and we're crossing into the new. And I think that's part of the birthing pains, you know? And I want to say one more thing about the economics is this is important for people to remember. The UN approved, I put this on our telegram a couple of months ago, they're going to start a 13 month calendar. I don't, I think, I don't know if it's next year or whatever it's coming out though. That means they're giving us the time back they stole from us because they stole about three or four days a month from us. And that, that, that accumulates. But uh, October 1st is not the fourth quarter. It's the fourth quarter of the calendar, but physical, the financial year, October in the Western world starts the new fiscal year for us in Europe. In April, it's the Middle East. Interesting. That's their new year. So that's a really good sign for us in the new fiscal year of this transition. Yeah, I think it's, it's only, uh, it's looking better and better as we get closer to the finish line. Absolutely. Well, Eli, I want to respect your time. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties you have, but I'm really glad we got to come on and I'll look forward to having you again as usual next month. Um, last words of wisdom for the audience and where can people find your work? Um, I'm back on, on YouTube. I, I what, what, how am I listed on YouTube is Ellie Weber. I, th I think it's Ellie Weber or Eli Weber. And uh, I'm still on rumble. I I've had some difficulties with rumble, but I'm on X as well. And uh, but I'm 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 starting to broadcast live again on YouTube. I'm very excited that they let me uh, come back, and uh, I really appreciate whoever is down at YouTube. Thank you so much for giving me the chance to come back, and you know, in in a way that's uh that's good for everyone because all voices really should be heard. Absolutely. Um, any last thoughts? Or are you good with 
that pretty much. Yeah, that's it, man. Just hang in there. We're, we're coming, you know, it, but again, do what you love to do. Make, you know, be a fanatic. If you're going to be fanatic about anything, be fanatic in, in advocating for your own uh, future and, and enjoy it. Absolutely. And just on our end real quick, mostly this is for your audience. I think my audience knows this already. Uh, you talked about changing the education system and, you know, Chamise is talking about Trump as President Trump's talked about it. We've been proactive on the last year or so creating a new platform called Club Patriot, which allows people to break the mold of the old system, start to communicate with each other, network with other business owners for ideas, patents, et cetera. So folks, we recommend you check that out, clubpatriot.com. Um, it's You'll see a link in our description. At least investigate it. It costs you nothing to look at it. Um, if it's for you, you know, it might be a viable option. And if you are looking to get currencies or add to the position that you already have and just improve it, because when they close that door, they close that door. They, they'll be not, there won't be any more getting at, getting at it while the getting is good. We'll also leave that in the description. Just click on the more in the description and the links will be there. Eli Weber, always good to have you, brother. Thanks for being here. And we look forward to seeing you again next month. Thanks so much, John. I appreciate it. Take care. God bless. God bless.